Berserk has been one of the most influential stories of all time, inspiring elements of Final Fantasy XIV, Attack on Titan, and Black Clover. Little bits of Guts story are everywhere. Few other stories can make you as attached as this one will. I'm going to spoil a lot in this video, up to chapter 372 to be exact. Let's get into it. Here's why Berserk will break your heart. After the passing of Kentaro Miura, one of my favorite YouTubers, It's a Gundam, put out a tribute to him. I found the video this past fall and after decided to go check out the story for myself. The 1997 anime adaptation is all on YouTube and my mind was blown. Here's what happened. After one episode showing Guts killing monsters, we see a young Guts wandering around the world. Guts left the battle one day and was attacked on his way. He then fights the group attacking him and after beating some of them, he fights the leader, Griffith. Guts is defeated by Griffith and joins his group, the Band of the Hawk. The band was a mercenary group and fought for the army of Midland. Guts rises to the top of the ranks as a commander and serves along with Casca, another commander in the band. Casca seems to have some sort of deep-seated resentment towards Guts, and we later find out that that resentment is jealousy due to the fact that Griffith seems to like Guts more than Casca. Seeing Guts go from a complete loner to part of a family was so cool. Watching the band of the hawk win more and more was really wholesome. The ball, with Guts and Griffith smiling at each other, was probably the happiest moment of the entire story, and it makes Guts realize that to be true friends with Griffith, he has to find his own dream. Griffith tells him that they'll have to fight for his freedom, and Guts beats him easily. Griffith is so surprised by this that he goes to the princess, and the whole time he can only think of Guts. He calls the band together, but is captured before he can meet with them. When the band actually showed up, they were ambushed. Guts had no idea any of this happened for over a year, and had been living with a blacksmith training to improve his swordplay. When he finally meets with Casca again, she is furious with him. She somewhat blames him for Griffith being irrational after Guts left. She's not completely wrong. After a bit, they rebond and go to save Griffith. They save him with little to no hitches, but he can't stand, talk, or move his arms efficiently. I felt so bad for this man who seemed like he was right on his way to being king. Griffith went back with the Hawks. He hears Guts and Casca talk about how weak he is, and after a flashback, he steals a carriage and goes to a lake and tries to die, but fails. Griffith looks at his bailet, and the eclipse begins. Griffith! Griffith! It's Griffith, Griffith. Griffith! 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 The eclipse is one of the most shocking twists in all of fiction. The curveball of all curveballs. You spend all this time thinking that the happy ending is coming, and this snatches it all up. Guts and Casca are together again. Griffith is safe, and then it's gone. The God Hand shows up and offers Griffith the power of a god as long as he sacrifices the Band of the Hawk. Griffith chooses to gain the power because to him, his dream is the most important thing. The Band dies as monsters attack and Guts tries to reach Griffith but his decision has been made. He betrayed his family for his dream. After a while, the only members of the Band left are Guts and Casca. Guts tries to save Casca but a monster grabs onto his arm and Guts tries to cut off his arm to reach Casca but Griffith gets there first. As Guts is held down, Griffith does the unthinkable to Casca and Guts begins to cry. Then we cut to Guts leaving the blacksmith's house with one arm and one eye. The anime ends right here. Griffith! 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 Hey, Griffith! 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 So of course that kind of ending made it impossible for me to not go read the manga. I couldn't believe what Griffith had done and upon picking up where I left off in the manga, I found out the eclipse broke Casca's mind. She couldn't speak or show emotion and Griffith's actions corrupted Guts' baby with her, making it look horrible and seemingly unable to appear any time that isn't the night. People who read the manga as it came out had to wait decades for the shrewd warrior they loved to return. After the eclipse, Guts is motivated by two things, his love for Casca and his hate for Griffith. These are the two most important things to him, and that's what makes him the struggler. During the eclipse, he and Casca were branded for sacrifice and were fated to die. Skull Knight, who saved him, told him as much, but Guts doesn't care about fate. He will stop at nothing to achieve his goal. Honestly, if someone told me that he was a role model for them, I would understand. His fighting spirit is admirable and it's something we can all learn from. He kills so many apostles, but he gets the name the Black Swordsman. Due to the brand on his neck, every night spirits torment Guts and he hardly sleeps, but he keeps fighting. After defeating Razin, the conviction arc is just Guts fighting to get to Casca. No matter the obstacle, Guts will not give up. If he gives up, then he won't reach Griffith or Casca might die. He has these things to fight for, to live for, and because of that he refuses to fail. This is why the Berserker armor is so good for him. The armor lets him fight far past the point any other human could. And with Shiriki pulling him back from the brink, he can go closer and closer to the edge without losing himself in the way Skull Knight might have in the past. 
And not only that, Gus gets to be a part of a family again like he was in the Band of the Hawk. We see Gus mirrored by Griffith as he tries to get a new family and starting a new Band of the Hawk, but with them, they simply serve Griffith. They don't love him. All of this finally takes us to the point where Guts breaks. Guts finds out that if he goes to Elfheim, Casca can have her mind back, so Guts goes for it. He finally gets a boat, and after a long journey, over 8 years in IRL time, he makes it to the island. The woman in charge of the island tells Guts' group that they need to go into Casca's mind, and after all this time, Casca is restored. She rushes out to see Guts and immediately has flashbacks to the Eclipse. Despite this, Casca starts to train with the gang and continues to improve. Guts trains and is normally at peace. Then, the biggest turning point and since the eclipse happens. Guts' son shows up in the night, but he starts to transform and in his place is Griffith. This was the last chapter Miora wrote, and I felt a strong sense of loss when I saw the memorial at the end of the chapter. Then, the next six chapters made me feel even worse. Griffith kidnaps Casca, Guts' sword fails him, and all of the elves die. Guts could always count on his sword in every situation. He took comfort in it and it failed him. He just got Casca back, the real Casca, the Casca he knew before the eclipse, and now she was gone, again, and Griffith was the one to take her away, again. I don't think I've ever genuinely hated a character so much. Griffith might be the best villain ever written just because of that. The way his actions reverberate throughout the story feels so real. The pain of the characters is shown so well through the imagery even in these six new chapters. When emotion is shown so well through said imagery, lack thereof is also shown beautifully, literally and figuratively, through Griffith. I don't know why Griffith would do this to Guts. After all Guts has been through at his hand, Griffith just can't stop hurting him. At this point, Guts has lost faith in himself and his sword. Guts is broken, but he's at a crossroads. This is his biggest test so far. If he can keep struggling, keep pushing, then he will save Casca. But does he have it in him? How will he beat Griffith? Even if he kills Griffith, his son might die because they are clearly linked. How will causality affect all of this in the end? I don't know, but I would love to find out. I just want Guts to have happiness, and since this is clearly the last arc, I hope it happens. Well, I don't know when this video will drop, but I'm really excited for next chapters, and I really want to see Guts get out of this rut. I hope it's sooner rather than later.